couple of years ago, I was at a hang uh, at the Maha and had pitched my tarp uh, in the way which seemed natural to block the wind, but the weather came from a 90 degrees direction I didn't expect uh, with wind blown rain, and so the weather was coming right under the tarp. I had a poncho with me, and so I uh, closed off one end of the tarp with the poncho, and uh, that seemed like a good solution, a dual use solution, although I don't usually carry a poncho. So later it occurred to me that I would make a piece uh, called a beak uh, to put over the, the back end of a tarp to, to block weather coming from that, from that end. So I'm here to demonstrate a beak. I've made a, a couple of uh, do-it-yourself versions, uh, but then 2Q got interested in the possibility of uh, manufacturing this and selling it uh, to the hammock forums community. I have heard the people's cries, and I present to you the Grisby. So he sent me a prototype. It is really a beautiful piece of work. Let me show you. If you look at the corner, this is particularly nice. Look at that, that fine, fine needlework. This beak measures 13 inches along the ridge line. Uh, forms a right angle to the front edge of the beak, which goes down to the ground. Uh, that edge is 50 inches long. And then a long straight edge that goes down along the bottom. Now the height of the beak, this 50 inches, turns out to be quite important. What you want to do is fasten this top corner um, at the, uh, the ridge line of the tarp and then drop the doors down vertically. And then what that happens is that because of the right angle, the bottom edge of this tarp will wrap around parallel to the ground and then you can stake it down. But we'll see some closer pictures of this to show you what it is in the tarp. We'll put the beak on now. It goes on pretty quickly. We find the ridge line. And I've got a clip at one end of the ridge line. And I just need to clip that onto the ridge line of the tarp. Put the beak on that one side. Now the next thing is to bring the, uh, the doors straight down. And uh, indeed we want it straight because we'll anchor it that way and then uh, deal with the sides. At the corners and for the purposes of anchoring the door, we'll just run a stake through both of the loops and then run that into the ground. Now we'll bring the side of the door around and because we have the front vertical then this will track close to the ground. Bring it around an edge and actually we can pitch it down low, almost underneath the tarp to create a bit of a seal that's right here. So you can see that that's creating a nice wind block. Now we do the same to the other side. There is a small gap here through the door, and if we want to close that up, we can bring the ends of the doors around a bit. These are held together by one stake right now. So if I do one stake and create a bit of a crossover, and I can make a seal. Now you see, particularly with this edge where the wind is coming from, then uh, the only place where we have a gap is right up here through the uh, to the hole where the suspension line comes. So that's a nice seal, and you can see um, it's keeping the wind out, which is exactly what we want. We're looking at it from the front now, and we can see how the uh, suspension rope just comes right out the top, and the door closes up around it. We come around to the side, and here now you can see and appreciate that there's a bit of tension 
bit of tension that pulls the corner down and fastens it. Come inside and see how things look. Say, stick your head up there, JP, and say hello. Hello. Yes, are you cozy and comfortable in there? Yeah, it looks cozy and comfortable to me. If there was any strong wind coming, you wouldn't feel it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down and I'll put up another tarp and show you that it works just as well. I have an idiosyncratic way of hanging my JRB 11 by 10 tarp. Um, I take one end and point it into the wind and then fasten the edge with grip clips creating a knife edge and that uh, will cut the wind and the wind just sheds right off that side. So this creates a sort of a sill nylon cave with an open end. What I want to do now is to take the grid speak and close off that end so I have in essence uh, a tent. And it turns out that the Grisbeak works on this tarp just as well as it does on the hex cut ones. So we've got great overlap here. Now I just want to take the front and seal off inside a bit more. Need another stake. Just do a crisscross. And there we are once again with a completely sealed tarp. So now we've seen that the Grizz Beak uh, applies to a variety of tarps. It's a handy piece of kit, and lightweight, throw it in your pack, and it'll give you that extra bit of protection for when the wind and the rain comes up. So now we'll go to 2Q again, uh, who will tell you more about how to go about getting Grizzbeak from 2Q and the Zipper Queen. Hi, I'm Two Questions. Grizz has designed a removable beak that is very simple, yet very effective on most tarps. I am privileged to be offering the Grizzbeak for sale on our website. The Grizzbeak is made of gray sill nylon and is meticulously sewn by ZQ. All the edges are finished with polyester tape, the stakeout loops are reinforced, and the beak weighs less than five and a half ounces. The beak panels are cut large enough to create a significant vestibule for additional protected storage, even when the tarp is pitched at a wide angle. Interested in a grizz beak? Go to 2QZQHammockHanger.com and click on the Accessories tab. The grizz beaks are made to order by ZQ. She'll be glad to make one for you. Happy hanging! <laughs> that was taken home. <laughs> <laughs>